Welcome back. This is Hex to Hex. All right, we uh, we finished Rostov 41. We played through all 14 turns, and it took all 14 turns. And I'm quite uh, intrigued by the result. So let's take a peek over here. About three turns ago, or four turns ago, I started shooting out with mechanized German units to take these, take as many of these victory hexes as we could. All right, we took this one up here up north, but as you can see, the Russians have taken it back. Well, maybe you can't see. Well, definitely not gonna see it that way. One of these days I'll figure out how this thing works. All right. Ah. All right, so we had taken this with the Germans, and then we took it back with the Russians. Germans took this one here. <clears throat> the Germans took this one here, which was a five-pointer, and the Russians were never able to knock him out. Matter of fact, the Russians lost two units trying to get him out. And then on the last turn, the Germans were the last ones to move. In order to keep this guy in supply, I had to move this guy from here to here, knowing that the Russians didn't have any more movement, so they were never going to be able to take that. And the Germans would be the last one in control. This unit down here, he's DG'd, but he would have been that would have been cleared at the end of his turn, and he's he's able to trace supply. So supply is this is only uh, enemy zones to control, negate supply, uh, and impassable terrain. So I mean, literally, this guy could just blah 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 all the way up here to this guy, like this to this hex, and right down through them, and right on out to supply. All right. So everybody over here is in supply. The Germans had taken Batysk, or Batysk, however you want to say it right here. But the Russian armor that's here, they got around behind them. They got a very good die roll and eliminated the recon unit that was sitting there. Um, the Germans lose victory points for uh, tank units that are eliminated, not recon. It's the symbols with the straight armor oval in them, nothing else in there. So they didn't lose any, and they lose for every two artillery units, they lose a victory point. So they didn't lose any artillery units. Um, you can see the stacks up here of all the Russians. Um, now, of course, any infantry unit that was a movement point of five or less, every time they got killed, you rolled a dice on a one to three, they would go back on the turn record chart, whatever number you rolled between one and three, and they would come back in as reinforcements. And that is to account for like replacements and other reinforcements. Um, if they rolled a four, five, or six, they were permanently eliminated. So you can see a lot of permanently eliminated stuff was done. Rostov never touched it. <laughs> the game's called Rostov 41. It, it ought to be called Rostov never done from what I could see playing this. It doesn't mean there's anything wrong. Just that I never moved the Rostov defense forces out of there. And there was no way the Germans were going to get there in the, with enough force to strike them. And plus, once the Germans got to a certain... <sighs> A certain progression, you really didn't need to push for Rostov if you were able to grab all this other stuff. Although that would have been the golden prize because there's your link into the uh, Caucasus. All right, let's take a look around the battlefield here. So, the middle along the river here, that light sucks. Let me turn that off. So, in the middle here along the river, just uh, to the northwest of Rostov, um, the Tuzlov or whatever that is. I ended up having to stretch the Russians out because if you remember in the previous video, uh, the Germans got that first clear phase and they got three airstrikes and they got all those overruns. The Germans have a lot of exploit capable units. So um, we tried in three locations to knock a Russian unit out so we could get that supply going over to these guys to keep them in supply. And we did have one that was successful, but then the Germans maneuvered and blocked it again but it wasn't there wasn't enough there for me to not be able to move those german units through the zone of control because remember you can do that in this game if you have movement points and since that guy had six it was easy for him to get there and then they just daisy chained uh the germans did take this at one time but the russians took it back and there's no they have some some victory locations where if the germans all they did it was occupy at one time and they got the certain number of points and they got more points if they were the uh, owners of it, or they had control of it at the end of the game. And the Germans hung on to this one up here, okay? And that's just artillery sitting there. And these Russians here, 
They tried to flee through those hills and get across this river to get some victory points. But you can see five of them did. There were like seven or eight of them, but the Germans attacked and killed them. Uh, the Soviets took Stalino back. I tried to attack on the last turn and drew a stalemate. No casualties, no, no attacker retreat, no defender retreat. So the Russians maintained Stalino. And you have to, if it's a multiple hex victory location, one side has to control them all. I um, mean, so the Germans have to control them all to get the victory points. All right. So, <clears throat> all in all, the Soviets got six victory points. They removed six victory points from the Germans because of these three units here, all right, south of that river and below Hex Row 30. South of the river and below Hex Row 30. And funny, and, uh, I'm sorry, south or west of the Krinka and my. The Krinka and the Mayus River here. All right, so over here on this side and below Hex Row 30. And this damn unit in Stalino is in Hex Row 29. So they got they they took six victory points away from the Germans. How did it end? The Germans had 21 victory points. The Russians took away six, and it gave the Germans 15 victory points for the game. Now, how does that translate? So if you go over here to the victory, the victory conditions, and you'll see it right there. Victory conditions, 14 to 17 is a German minor victory, and they had 15. So they snuck it in by two points. And I want to say that Todd or Wardrow, I want to say his was the same, somewhere between 14 and 17. So I'm going to get with him and compare some notes on this one. So there you have it, Rostov 41. Okay. Um... Not my favorite SCS game, because Day of Days still is. You know me, I like that big stuff. But this one, if you have this, or if you have access to it, uh, get this one out and play it. Because it's not you're not waylaid with counters. You have to think uh, on how to work with the... First off, you have to think about your attacks with the Germans. And you're not going to do a whole lot of attacking with the Russians, because uh, the only strong units they got are the armor units, and I knocked off. Well, now think about it. 100% of the Soviet armored, no, except for that stack right there. All of the Soviet armored is knocked out. They're all sitting up there in the casualty pile. Fortunately, the Germans don't get any victory points for that. So you have to, you have to decide on how you're going to attack. Um, supply is, is much easier to keep in supply in this game, in the SCS series, uh, especially in this one, since the units are so sparse and scattered all over the place. Um, you're not going to daisy chain the big stacks of units together. And, you know, your defensive benefits are usually column shifts because you're in a city or you're behind a river or you're in the hills. So you've got to, you know, you've got to figure out how to position your Soviet stacks. I thought I had done a good job until that clear turn broke out and the rush and the Germans rolled like seven ones on 12 barrages and then had three airstrikes to go along with it. So remember that uh, barrages in this game uh, cannot eliminate the last step of a combat unit. Air can, doesn't say anything about air. Okay. They give you a lot of out of supply markers, which I don't really think you need in this game. Probably just to fill out the counter sheet, I guess. Not even all the DG markers. Those up there never touched them. All right, so Rostov 41, good playing game. Get it on the table, play it. You won't be disappointed. It plays pretty smooth, plays pretty fast. I'm t you could probably sit down and play this game in one day easily if you had better focus than I do. All right, MMP 2020 it was the last of their SCS games they printed. Um, I don't think they put out another one after that. Um, but like I said, if you got to get out and play it. So this is good. This ends with a German victory, a German minor victory, but it is a victory. And that wraps up the 14-turn play of the Standard Combat Series. Um, might try to do a review. I'm working on something uh, with somebody. And we might try to do a, a rating review on this on this game since a couple of us have played it. All right, let's get this thing posted so you all can see how Rostov 41 ended. All right, just hex to hex. Talk to you all later.